Hello, I'm Kaylee Moss. I'm the Senior Advice Manager for Practical Science at AQA. I'm here at the headquarters of Klebs, which is an organisation that supports safe practice for practical work in schools. I'm going to demonstrate some interesting ways of looking at catalysts and talk about the chemistry behind them to help bring out the ways scientists work when they do experiments. The reason why we do practicals is to make the learning more meaningful, memorable, and to help cement your understanding of key concepts and language. Not all experiments we do in class are the set required practicals, but they're used to help put the content you have learned into better context, so it's clearer to understand. Today's practicals are investigating catalysts and their effects on the rate of decomposition reactions. You may have heard of enzymes. These are biological catalysts, some of which can be found in our bodies. And there are also lots of chemical catalysts used in industry to speed up reactions, to save time and energy. A catalyst is a substance that speeds up a chemical reaction. It does this by providing an alternative reaction pathway which has a lower activation energy. Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy needed to start a chemical reaction. Today we are using a chemical called hydrogen peroxide. It has the formula H2O2. What's happening to the hydrogen peroxide now? It looks like nothing, but it is slowly decomposing to water and oxygen gas is being given off. What do I mean by this term? Maybe you've heard of food decomposing, for example, in a compost heap in a garden. For matter to decompose, it's breaking down into smaller parts. Hydrogen peroxide naturally decomposes into water and oxygen. Can you write a word or perhaps even a symbol equation for this chemical reaction? Now is a good opportunity to take a couple of seconds for you to have a go, or if you're watching on demand, you can pause the video. This chemical is manganese 4 oxide. It is a chemical catalyst. The reason the catalyst isn't shown in the equation is because the catalyst isn't used up in the reaction it is regenerated at the end of a chemical reaction. The first experiment I'm going to show you is what happens when the catalyst manganese 4 oxide is added to the hydrogen peroxide. What will be the effect on the speed of decomposition? I'm now going to add some of the manganese 4 oxide to the hydrogen peroxide. As you can see, it's much quicker and there are fumes of gas being released. The reaction feels warm because heat has been produced. This is what we call an exothermic reaction. To be sure we have decomposed hydrogen peroxide, we need to test these fumes that are being produced. What is the test for oxygen gas? you've managed to work out the test. If a glowing splint relights, we have oxygen being produced. I'm going to show you this now. And there is the confirmation that oxygen gas has been produced. The next experiment we're going to look at involves some living tissues. We are going to use examples of living tissues that contain enzymes. An enzyme is the term we use for a biological catalyst. In this experiment, we are going to use one from a plant, which is potato, and one from an animal, which is liver. Which one do you think will decompose hydrogen peroxide the quickest? Here's a hint. Think about what the function of the liver is. 
Take a couple of seconds now to discuss the scientific reasoning for your answers. I have added washing up liquid to the hydrogen peroxide in each of these measuring cylinders. This allows me to trap the oxygen gas produced in bubbles. The more bubbles I get, the more oxygen will have been produced. The washing up liquid will have no effect on the reaction itself, but allows us to better see the results. I'm now going to add the liver and the potato to our hydrogen peroxide and washing up liquid. What did you see happen? Were your predictions correct? If you said that the liver was a better catalyst, then you were correct. This is because animals naturally produce hydrogen peroxide. This is a byproduct of chemical reactions that happen in the body. However, if it is left in the bloodstream, it can damage our cells. The liver is an organ that is responsible for filtering the blood and it decomposes any hydrogen peroxide found in it. Therefore, liver tissues contain more of the biological catalyst, which is an enzyme called catalase. Plants also need to break down hydrogen peroxide, but in much smaller quantities. What would happen if we heated the potato and liver to 50 degrees first? If you're watching on demand, you may like to pause the demonstration here and develop a hypothesis. Make sure to try to give the scientific reason behind your thinking. As these are both biological tissues, the heat would denature the enzymes. Denature means that the structure of the enzyme would change. More specifically, the active site, which is the part of the enzyme that would interact with the hydrogen peroxide. As a result, the enzymes wouldn't work as well or would stop working completely. If I urgently needed to decompose some hydrogen peroxide and I only had potato available, how could I increase this rate of the reaction? Again, if you're watching on demand, pause the video here to discuss this as a class. You could increase the surface area by cutting the potato up into smaller pieces or perhaps even grating it as we have here. This will speed up the chemical reaction. Why would this work? Why would the reaction occur faster? Well, if there is more surface area, it would mean more chance of hydrogen peroxide and the enzymes colliding and therefore decomposing. In this next experiment, I'm going to compare the reaction between hydrogen peroxide and two different chemical catalysts. These are manganese 4 oxide and iron 3 oxide. As a class, vote which you think will be the best catalyst. Okay, so I'm going to add some iron 3 oxide to my hydrogen peroxide with some uh, washing up liquid. I'm also going to add some manganese 4 oxide to, again, just some hydrogen peroxide with some washing up liquid. And as we can see, manganese 4 oxide is the more effective catalyst. This is because it provides the reaction pathway that has a lower activation energy. If more reactant particles, in this case the hydrogen peroxide molecules, have 
energy equal to or greater than the activation energy, the faster the rate of the reaction will be. Could you suggest a way to modify the experiment to get more accurate results? Discuss your answers if you're watching on demand. A more accurate collection method would be to change the experimental design. Instead of using washing up liquid to be able to see the bubbles, use a conical flask with a gas ring attached and measure the volume of oxygen gas released. Alternatively, you could use a mass balance and measure the loss in mass from the reaction. These are both methods you will need to understand for your GCSE exams. Also, you could be asked how we can ensure the data we collect is reliable. With any experiment, we could repeat it to see if we get the same results or patterns. Usually, we do this at least three times. You should then review your data and move any anomalous results. These are results that perhaps don't fit the pattern. What would happen if you warmed the hydrogen peroxide, even if it was just through sunlight coming through the window? What do you think would happen? For my final experiment, we're going to look at the effect of increasing the concentration of the reactant and see what effect this has on the rate of reaction. What is concentration? I'll give you a clue. If you look at these two beakers of cordial, we would say that this one is more concentrated than the other. What does that mean in terms of particles? If you're watching on demand, take a few moments now to write your definition. The concentration of a solution is the number of particles in a given volume. Hopefully you've identified that this beaker contains more particles of cordial in the given volume. Therefore, it has a higher concentration. Here, I have a higher concentration of hydrogen peroxide, which means there are more hydrogen peroxide particles in this solution. What do you think will happen to the rate of the reaction? Pause the video if you're watching on demand and make a prediction. Perhaps this concentration was a little too high. As you can see, this rapidly increased the rate at which the hydrogen peroxide is decomposing. Was your prediction correct? Increasing the concentration of the reactant increases the rate of reaction because it increases the frequency of the collisions between the catalyst and the hydrogen peroxide molecules. I'm now going to hand over to Bob Worley, chemistry advisor for Cleeps, who will be taking you through some microscale experiments. Over to you, Bob. Hello, I'm Bob. I'm the Senior Chemistry Advisor for Cleeps. You've seen up to now demonstrations using very concentrated hydrogen peroxide. We're going to use a more diluted solution of hydrogen peroxide in a microscale experiment suitable for students to identify common catalysts that you might find in school and your everyday life, like fruit and vegetables. This worksheet can be found in the related resources section. The printed worksheet is placed into a plastic wallet. When aqueous solutions are added to the surface, they create hemispheres, in which you can see the reactions. I'm going to place the catalyst into the centre of each of these circles, rather like this one. And then I'm going to add drops of hydrogen peroxide around them. This is potassium iodide solution. This is copper sulfate solution. This is iron 3 nitrate solution. This is potassium chloride solution.
This is a fruit, a banana. This is potato. This is mushroom. And this is yeast. Finally, we're going to use some powders. And powders are very difficult to handle, so I put them into a Petri dish. What we're looking for are lots of bubbles that appear in the solution. This will give us an idea of what acts as a catalyst and what doesn't. Manganese dioxide, the enzymes in yeast, mushroom, potato, banana. We can see that iron 3 nitrate works. Potassium iodide is beginning to work. Copper sulfate, I can just see a few bubbles. Nothing in potassium chloride. And finally, this is the control. If I look closely, I can see some bubbles forming, caused by the light in this room. Thank you for watching. I'd now like to hand back to Elise, who together with the science team, will be answering your questions. <laughs>